dangerous situation seems to be developing around the Zaporizhia nuclear plant, which has been under the control of the Russians from March onwards. Ukraine has alleged that Russia is shelling the plant while it is also positioning artillery batteries within the plant. Why should it be shelling a plant which, is, which it has controlled for the last four months, which is under its occupation by all accounts? And why should it, if it really did position artillery inside the plant, why is evidence not visible in any form which has been presented by either Ukraine or its NATO allies? Russia has presented evidence to the United Nations, according to what its spokesmen have said, detailing out what is the condition of the plant, that it has been attacked by outside forces, shelling has taken place of the plant, which they are in control of. And it has also said that if we really have positioned artillery as Ukraine and others are claiming, why is it there are no satellite imagery available to show this? Because that's, that's a very simple exercise. Any major news agency also has access to satellite imagery. Why is this evidence not visible? They've also shown videos inside the plant showing that this plant is not positioning heavy weapons inside it as claimed. So the question is, why is this campaign, which has been backed by essentially Western news agencies, Western governments as well, including what debate took place in the United Nations Security Council. Why is it that this campaign or this rhetoric is being repeated by major media houses? Before we get into the question of why, let's look at what is under threat, because I think that's a very, very important issue which concerns all of us. We are talking about a nuclear plant, which is the largest in Europe. It has 6,000 megawatt reactors in it. It has a huge amount of waste material, radioactive waste material, a bulk of which is, of course, what are called the uh, fuel rods, spent fuel rods, which are in ponds, holding ponds. And then, of course, you have the live fuel inside the reactors, out of which four have been shut down, two are running still. And if any of the reactors which are running, if they lose, for instance, the cooling system due to any attack, due to external power being lost, under such conditions, it is possible that you have what is called a core meltdown, which means the fuel, which is what produces the heat, is not cooled, it continuously produces radioactivity and also the breakdown of the uranium, uranium fuel produces heat. And if it is not cooled continuously, this can raise the temperature leading to the melting down of the uranium fuel, which is inside the reactor, producing what is called a core meltdown. We have pictures of the core meltdown what happened in, for instance, in Fukushima, not too long back, where a, essentially a tsunami took out the external power sources and also the digisets, which acts as a temporary backup power. And then the reactor really went, quote unquote, haywire, and slowly it heating up, inability to bring it under control. And we had a meltdown of three reactors in Fukushima. So this is something which is acknowledged by everybody to be extremely dangerous because it led to, in the Fukushima incident, radioactive release in the atmosphere and huge amounts of radioactive water being released in the Pacific Ocean. Just recently, also, a large amount of radioactivity has been released in the Pacific Ocean. Of course, Pacific Ocean is very large, so maybe it won't really make a difference. But we had also the example of Chernobyl, where the reactor did not suffer from a core meltdown like this due to losing auxiliary power, auxiliary cooling water, but it actually had a meltdown because of the 
hubris of the engineers who are doing a zero power test bypassing all the protection. If this is repeated in this particular plant, the Zaprogia plant, then the consequences are it will not only lead to release of radioactivity which will affect Ukraine as well as Russia, but also the Black Sea and of course a very large part of Europe. Now these are serious consequences and when we see shelling of the nuclear plant and just a day back we also saw the shelling, reports of the shelling taking down the transmission line which means the external power source which has to come to Zaprogia either to evacuate power to take the power that it is producing out but also to provide backup power in case the system there is a problem with the system and you have to provide cooling power, cooling water pumps, the auxiliary power or external power to see that the plant does not face a core meltdown like the Fukushima plant did. So these are all extremely dangerous situations in which we find a nuclear plant being bombed as well as of course the transmission lines also being endangered. Again it seems to be due to shelling. So the question therefore is why is it that the world seems to be relatively blasé about it. There is no urgency that we see it about this issue. Even in the United Security Council, it was last month that Russia had complained that this is shellings are starting to take place. We are seeing firings on the plant and this is dangerous. And at that time also there was no response from the European powers or United States which seemed to believe this is okay. A war, it's all right. If Russia, a plant under Russian control is attacked, that's okay. It's not a major urgency. Of course, it's also true that the Fukushima uh, plant is, was a much older plant. This is a relatively younger plant. But nevertheless, compared to Chernobyl, it is relatively well protected. It has basically a concrete structure which protects it from any either attacks from outside or uh, even under conditions of a meltdown, it will retain the containment. The containment structure is certainly much better than what was there in Chernobyl. So it has protection. But if a core meltdown takes place, all of this won't mean much. You will still see release of radioactivity to the atmosphere and therefore it is a dangerous situation. It's yes, it will be partially protected unlike Chernobyl which had a weak containment structure but it still will cause a very large release of radioactivity nearby and including you know, wind carrying it in long distances. So this is a serious situation. You also have what is called in the holding pond the spent fuel and if there is a hit on that again you will see the you know, radioactivity being dispersed, radioactive material being dispersed nearby. So people like me who have grown up with looking at nuclear power plants. I remember the Three Mile Island disaster which is only about 30 minutes away from a complete meltdown. It's only a partial meltdown. So these are very dangerous moments. If you take the uh, core meltdown situation, a complete core meltdown on the scale of what is nuclear accidents, it is scales, it's a level 7 accident. That's what Fukushima and Chernobyl had. The Three Bell Island, which had a partial meltdown, was level 5. So it was well below it, but don't forget, 30 minutes away, it would have gone to level, level 7. So that's how far close we were to a meltdown. And there again, by the way, it was the circulating, the cooling water pumps being stopped. That's what led to the dangerous situation that we saw. And in fact, it was, sa it was saved of a meltdown only because of a new shift came and say, we are making a mistake. We are uncovering the core. We are in a very dangerous situation. Just put in cooling water right now and restarted the cooling water pumps. So this is a dangerous moment if any accident takes place or if the auxiliary power goes down by which it will mean that if the plant trips, then the cooling water won't be available for the core. So to be it is, what shall we say, it's criminal 
that both the Ukrainian government and the rest of the world is sort of playing what I would call nuclear chicken with safety of this plant. And the fact that Russia is saying that this is a danger doesn't seem to convince the world media that they should actually evaluate what Russia is saying in this case. Whether they agree with Russia's intervention in Ukraine or not is a different issue. You can condemn Ukraine, you can condemn Russia, you can con condemn anybody that you want, but that's not the point. The issue is not condemnation. The issue is if there is a risk to the nuclear plant, it involves all of us, and of course mostly Ukraine, Russia, and Europe. They should be the most concerned. So why is it this is happening? I would, I, I, honestly speaking, I find it very difficult to understand how any responsible leader in Ukraine could take the position that shelling of the plant is to be blamed on Russia and make a propaganda point out of it, at the same time really uh, shell the plant. This to me is ununderstandable. Of course, those who are saying Russia is shelling this pl the plant which it is controlling, this is of course unbelievable, because why would you shell a plant which you've been controlling for the last three, four months? No news media house in the West which has been plugging this line has given us an answer to that. So the question is, what can United Nations do? What can IAEA do? Which is the only organ now we have, the only instrument we now have of intervening in this and trying to see at least that some basic controls are asserted. Now, the other question which we still have to answer is why is Ukraine doing it? And it seems that Russia was planning according to reports, though we don't have confirmation of that from the Russian side, that they were planning to disconnect the, U the plant from the Ukrainian grid and start connecting it to the Russian grid. It's interesting, in spite of the war, this plant under Russian control has been supplying electricity to the Ukrainian grid. That means Ukraine gets power from this plant still. And 2000 a megawatt of reactor power is not an insignificant amount. So they have been supplied with power even though Russia controls the plant. They also take some part of this power and sell it now to Western Europe, European Union countries, because uh, I think they're selling about 100 megawatt to the European Union countries. And that, at the current price, uh, there, is, there, there is a lot of money to be made in doing that. So it does seem that one possible reason, I hesitate to call it a reason because it's really so dangerous, but one possible explanation could be that the Ukraine gov Ukrainian government is trying to put pressure on Russia to see that they do not disconnect the Zaporozhia plant from the Ukrainian grid, in which case it will lose a significant part of its electricity, which it now gets from the plant. So that could be one explanation. Second is that they are doing brinkmanship not only for this, but also to put pressure that the Zaporozhia plant or the area is vacated, put under UN control, and if that is so, in which case the way UN has taken up this issue, it probably would be de facto put under the control of the Ukrainian government. So is it a backdoor attempt to take the plant, take over the plant by putting pressure on the safety, the security of the plant, using United Nations as a via media? Because both IAEA and the United Nations today, but the Mr. Guterres, the Secretary General, and uh, Rossi, the IAEA Director General, seem to be much more in the Western camp, and publicly so, than we would expect these bodies' heads to be. Now, that is the other possibility, given the fact that Russia has been asking for IAEA to come into the plan for the last two months, and the response has been, we'll have to work it out to the Ukrainian government, and we'll only go to Ukrainian territory, not to Russian territory. So given the importance of an intervention from IAEA, should these be the considerations on the safety of the plant? That is a question IAEA needs, IAEA needs to answer. And that is a question the United Nations, at least the Secretary General, needs to think about. Because these are extremely dangerous times. We should not think that this is a usual war that 
has gone in, unfortunately, in different parts of the world, still is continuing in, say, for example, in Africa, in Yemen. Yes, those wars are dangerous. There's no question to the people concerned. But this is a much bigger threat because we are talking of nuclear reactors, safety of nuclear reactors, and they really are far, far more damaging and have much longer damage to inflict. That is why it is important that all of us, including other countries, do try to raise their voice and say, this war must stop, and certainly attacks of this kind must be immediately halted. We need peace in Ukraine. We need peace in which NATO countries do not threaten the security of Russia, as Russia says. We need a larger resolution of which way Europe should go. Should it go for peace, or does it does it still get into competitive military pacts, eastward expansion of NATO, and then, of course, pressure on Russia and on Central Asia, that which side of the Cold War, the new Cold War, should you be? I think that is the danger. This kind of zero-sum game is a danger that we see unfolding in Ukraine and also in the Zaporozhia plant. Thank you very much for being with us. Do keep watching fault lines.